when you're falling I'll be there above all there's a there's a hierarchy of things here if we can destroy the rest we don't care what the press will say and then we can deal with it later after it has passed oh, i think need... we're forgetting one thing here we do still have career around uh if he's in this morning we could see what he could set up to let us get away with it well, minimal damage could... minimal panic and yeah burning down the building shouldn't take too long those there are fireproof more or less well, sprinkler it's... systems they could turn those off the building isn't really the what you know he's not going to establish an entire flesh tower in the middle of town he builds i keep referring it to him as a him it isn't it it burrows down it is in the sewers the tunnels everything down there and then it just bursts out like some horrid bursting thing very eloquent. Um. So if, if we can, we don't necessarily Still. need to burn down towers, we just need to burn out tunnels. Right, but we did learn something interesting lately. The polyps. They keep an oh. eye on things. They give them information. If we locate the other ones and knock those out, even if most of the infrastructure is still there, he's missing the head. Well, we could only possibly get rid of one or two before the other ones just duck into hiding. That's possible, but if they're hiding, they're not looking around and giving information. Well, you saw what that thing could see even from inside a gross hotel room. Regardless if it's hiding or not, it may see less, but it still sees. Still, it might uh, give us a little bit of t extra time if something terrible happens. Okay, and in uh, that point, you're going to get a, a couple tones over the intercom, and Dr. Shen's going to say, uh, Can I get the A squad down to the laboratory, please? That was gone. <laughs> Firebrand just goes ahead and takes the stairs. Is this like an emergency kind of? Uh, it, it didn't uh, sound very. It didn't sound very okay. emergency, but it, it sounded All like right. regular levels of Dr. Shen anxiety. Yeah. All right. So I don't zip down then. Scott doesn't trust. She doesn't trust Dr. Shen like at all. So. <laughs> oh, I love the flesh. It's so interesting. Yeah, sure, buddy. Okay. So. You guys, come down into the lab. He's standing there with a couple of technicians, one of which has a machete. Oh, no. Uh, Not even a machete, but a machete. A machete. <laughs> machete damn it. I didn't think uh, you guys got issued these. I thought you wouldn't with just, like, the knives. Firebird uh, just, like, gets distracted immediately. It's like, well, uh, we kind of have to make a more serious procedure now. And he gestures towards the uh, the little enclosure. And whereas your body parts are just been kind of falling off and going around originally, they've now coalesced into a horrible meat spider thing. Oh, that's see, pretty. Like, bones and sinews and shit. This thing is scampering around. It's like going up walls and stuff and leaving a little slime trail wherever it goes. Scrap is just like, bam, like right at the door. <laughs> um, what? Uh, hold on. Hold on. Now, we've noticed, though its movements are erratic, it is following a pattern. It always moves to this corner of the room. Every, he's going to look at his watch, look at a piece of paper. Every 15 minutes or so, it spends a large amount of time clawing at that corner. We believe it's trying to get somewhere. This guy's going to, he's, he's, he just gets the most dejected look on his eyes. And he's, we, we're not going to hook it up to a leash and follow it, are we? Well, not exactly. And he's gonna he's gonna beckon in the uh the guy from the uh he's gonna beckon in the guy with the machete. You know, like it's something a bit a bit more refined. And he's gonna press a button and these jets of something are going to come shooting out of the walls and are gonna start it's like a, a jet of what looks like smoke. It's gonna start shooting out of the sides. Uh, but anyone who's smart enough can recognize this is probably uh, liquid nitrogen. Oh. It's, and this thing is going to be frozen solid within maybe five seconds. Uh, the guy with the machete 
Oh shit, I opened the wrong thing. The guy with the, guy with the machete is going to then go inside, going to raise it up, and it's just going to hack off a chunk of the uh, of the spider thing and just shatters away. And then he has a small uh, plexiglass container that's maybe about like the size of a pop can. <laughs> and he's gonna Total put big in. Hero six, huh? Hmm. Big Hero Six. Hmm? The, the 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 Disney movie with the little bot they were here in the container that was using it as an indicator. Oh god. Uh, oh, that's cute. That. <laughs> yeah, like he, he 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 like puts it in there. And then he kind of w- walks out. And as you can see, this this is like slowly starting to thaw, and it's kind of like twitching a little bit now. Uh, but yeah, you have like a little leg stump bit in this little can. And it's just like, I believe if you follow it correctly, it might take you to some sort of nexus. And now, now I know you won't bring back any live specimens, but this might help in your work. Well, not compromising my work. I think this is excellent. This is exactly the kind of thing we were uh, almost literally just talking about. Wow, what a coincidence. Yeah, Firebrand just like thinks, man, I sure am fated and perfect and special like that. <laughs> <laughs> He's been a player character all his life. It's like, yes, fate is on my <laughs> side again. All right. But Firebrand like pulls out his iPad and like the uh, crayon maps that are on it. Goes, all right, so it wants to kind of go in this direction from here, and this is what we kind of know of its network. So which way are we going first here? It looks like it's like the little kind of little bit that is inside there has it, it used to just be a leg that was maybe about like a couple centimeters in diameter. Uh but now it the uh the walls of the leg have started like sprouting little bony bony legs of its own and now it looks like sort of like a little stumpy centipede like thing that's crawling around inside. Mm-hmm. It's not nice to look at. Right. This seems to be what they kind of do as like a default uh metamorphosis when there's not enough of them. Yeah. We've seen this around before. Mm-hmm. And so I guess I'd... funny that the amount of flesh that I slogged off turned into a whole spider. Yes. Well, that's funny. Holy shit, angry cat. Oh, no. Was that what that noise was? Yeah, it sounded like it. It's here already. <laughs> that's the noise it made because I right. shake it in the jar. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I'm surprised you guys heard that. <laughs> yeah, all right. I broke that up. We're good. Yeah, all right. <laughs> so, uh, you guys, with this, you now have this thing, and it looks like it is... Like, this is just a regular container as well. It's got a little, uh... Actually, no. No, it doesn't. It's just a container. It doesn't even have any air holes in it. It doesn't seem like it needs it. Yeah. And he's like, all right. Is there anything I can give you to help you out? Helicopter? (laughs) Well, I mean... Maybe some incendiaries. I guess I could requisition that. Sure. What, I'm not enough? You can always have more. Well, this is true. I can't fault you there. <laughs> okay. Well, let's see here. What? I guess yes, Sarah or Laura, Laura wouldn't be done with that thing. She's probably just still slowly working off that hangover, even though it got cured magically. <laughs> hmm. My question is, uh, Arc Flash, do you run faster <laughs> than I fly? No, I don't. Ah, he was like well... two ranks below or something. I'd do about 120. Yeah, meanwhile, I go like 600. So what I could do is I could go ahead and try scouting ahead to kind of direct us towards the general area here, and then we'll reconvene and do a spot search afterwards. I think that sounds like a plan. Yeah, yeah you go find out where it is, and then we'll airdrop in. And, I don't know, burst through the floor straight into the evil's den. Oh, you know, you got the task force helicopters. Just ask someone to fly you out. That, that's the plan. But yep. I think it's going to be a focus here. We need you to leave now. Well, I'll all handle right, all the right. over I, here. But I get you, Scrap. And uh, Firebrand will actually go ahead and just start heading up top. 
All right. I'll start filling up the paperwork. I need to get a day trip on a helicopter. Hell yeah. All right, so you guys are all suiting up and getting ready. And by the time you're all prepared, you got your little centipede in tow. And you're up on the flight deck with the helicopter. Yep. Firebrand has already gone ahead and is just kind of flying out towards the area, getting this thing to show him the way. Okay. So make a insight check. Yay! I have points in that. It's 21. Okay, so you can just you can determine. A lot of, a lot of time these movements seem to be random, but every every once in a while it does like seem to trend in one area over the other. Mm -hmm. And well in following that, you can trace it to northwestern Alpina near near the wall somewhere. Mm, okay. Mm -hmm. Around this area there's a lot of like defunct farming buildings, like vertical farms, that are being renovated. Mm, lots of organic stuff, huh? Okay. That makes a lot of sense, actually. Mm -hmm. Let's see. So right now I get this general area, so I could go ahead and land, direct people to come here, and we can reconvene. Okay. So the helicopter takes maybe about half an hour to get there. And you guys can touch off, you can touch down without too much, uh, too much trouble. And the chopper guy wants to know whether he should stay there, whether he should be nearby. Uh, yeah, if I recall right, there's at least two, three helipads on these buildings out here. Yeah, one of them will do. All right. And he's going to take off and head to the safety of the helipads. So you guys are surrounded by towering concrete farms. Uh, a lot of the like signs, signs that were uh, on the walls have been kind of torn off. You can still see the um, how not halogens, the neon tubes that are behind them as are being switched out for other companies, other rework stuff like that. Now, would this place just absolutely resonate with outsider stuff? It's not a lot, but there is a fair amount. So <laughs> I'm sorry, that was very poorly worded. There, there's some, yeah. but not a lot. The, yes, the, there's a lot of latent stuff, not too much active stuff. Well, let's grab a look at Firebrand and go, where is it going? Well, somewhere around here. So I guess now we need to take this little buddy and see where exactly he wants to go. No. Well, I guess it's probably no, no. downward. Yes, of course it's downward, but we're not letting that thing go. Oh, why would you think I wouldn't do that? The fact I don't have a leash or anything. Go. You just said you wanted to let it go. Well, no, I said we want to figure out where it's going. Mm. Anyway, so, uh, well, we still got this thing here. We have our map, crayon maps. Uh, what's kind of relative to this area on the crayon maps? That would God. be something that looks like a nexus. Is not nearly that precise. Hmm. They're just red marks in this area. Yes. But not a area. whole lot of red marks. No, but there's a fair amount. Hmm. Well, fine, let's go find, I don't know, a sewer entrance. Maybe a, just a loose concrete slab we can lift up. There's, there's something around here. There is always something. Yeah. Uh, should I go ahead and do the same thing for following little buddy's directions here? Or... Yes, make it, make another insight. Okay. Insight. Wow. Nice. Okay, right. consistency today. So it seems to be taking you to uh, one of the defunct closed buildings. It's kind of tapping up the glass more insistently now. Uh... It's a fairly small one of these vertical farms, but it looks a bit more disused than the other ones, like it's been abandoned for a bit longer. Well, that kind of fits the MO, then. Uh, are there any windows looking in? Uh, there aren't. Is there a front door? There is. It's, there is no longer a front door. The front door is gone. Well, I was going to say maybe we should do some subtle scouting, but I guess this works, too. The front door is gone. <laughs> So you walk in, 
and you can immediately smell something burning. I'll look like a firebrand. Yeah, firebrand will go straight in the direction of what's burning. Oh, I thought he was burning something already. No, so <laughs> you, you can, uh, so you come into this big vaulted thing. You can see a number of uh, like rows and racks that are filled with dirt that are kind of laying cobwebbed and empty. Uh, every every once in a while, you see like a a daylight light kind of flickering and blinking in the backs of these places. Uh, and you can see that see that there's uh, a little bit of smoke around the ceiling as you follow the smell of this burning. You make your way around through a couple of the back rooms, and you seem to find that you're following a large, heavy gauge tube, maybe about a foot across, that seems to work its way through here. Uh, until finally, you can actually hear the sound of flames and a kind of rushing, roaring sound every once in a while, and the sound of footsteps, some of them quite heavy, some of them normal. Hmm. Literally inside the fire? Uh, so in like an area behind it that seems like it's not on fire. Uh, hmm. Well, you don't really know yet, but you can see that like, maybe the fire is proceeding where they are. It looks like they're kind of working their way in your general direction instead of as you're working towards them. And when you kind of, you, you've kind of gotten to a doorway that you can see smoke coming out of the cracks and such, and you can hear the burning from behind it. As well, uh, there's a little bit of a film on the walls and the floor. It's kind of mucusy. Right, so this is the place. Who would be burning this down? Well, Firebrand's completely immune to heat and fire of all types, so he just kind of reaches for the door and opens it up. Okay. Probably gets like a good uh, backdraft in the process, and it's just like, oh, nice. Mm hmm. So let's change this down over to here. And. Uh, in this door, you can see some dudes. I'm just going to bring this up here. Fuck. God damn it, I know their game. All right. So you see some adherence inside. There's one of the large, smaller, normal kind that are walking around. Most uh, the large one has a large mounted flamethrower uh, on its arm with a large tank on its back, and the other one seems to be hacking stuff off the walls with chisels and long-handled tools. Firebrand looks a little surprised, but uh, just sort of cheers up a bit and waves, goes, oh, hey, guys. Uh, so they, it. they would immediately, like, stop doing straighten up. Uh, their heads turn around 180 degrees, <laughs> followed by their bodies. It's like you did uh, some good cleanup already. They're going to be silent for a couple seconds, and they're going to say, you should not be here. This place is infectious. Oh, well, that's exactly why we're here. I think we had about the same plan, honestly. <sighs> well, the plan is not proceeding quickly enough. We are running out of time. So everyone keeps saying. Yeah. Strap for the <laughs> briefest flash on his face, kind of like, finally. Wait, no, I can't agree with this. <laughs> <laughs> the conflict. It will happen very soon. The people of the city are not safe. Oh, you're absolutely correct about that. Yes, they must be removed. <laughs> Firebrand having casual <laughs> conversation in fire. Yeah, unlike the, the big ones just standing in the fire as well. Uh, no, but the, the people... Must be removed. Move to embrace the sacred aspect. Yeah, he's he's just it's laughing. Scrap is fucking dying over here. Is something funny? Yeah, nothing. 
to no one believe me that you were absolutely awful, terrible things. Oh my god. Mm, yes, but we knew you would do this. It's absolutely great. It's fantastic. Now I, I finally have an excuse. Later. Barbaran right, looks just a little bit confused for a second, <laughs> but then uh, ignores it anyway. <laughs> yes. You are doing good work coming here, removing these nests. But we are too late. The tide will come very soon. We can only hope to blunt it. Hmm. Well, that's trouble, but exactly the sort of trouble I was expecting. Are you and your kind all ready for that? Our I preparations. Be a bit of a fight going on. Our preparations have been made. The shard has assured us the plan is sound. The grand plan shall be enacted. Be that as it may, you should make sure that you have plenty of people on the ground fighting this uh, infection. <laughs> Jesus <Jeez. laughs> um. Don't just give everything up on one big grand plan. That's sort of how things collapse. Our aspect's logic is immutable. But nevertheless, we shall have a force to beat them back. Oh, yes. I understand that. Say, I don't suppose he'd mind having uh, some around for that. If you support the saving of this city, indeed the entire human race, then our ideals align. Well, you know, that's what I've been working towards all along. So it'd be nice to see him again and make sure a few things go down just perfectly. Hmm. You wish to organize a parlay? It's what I'm best at. And what do you wish to discuss? And, and I'm like, as, as you and the two uh, smaller ones are talking, the big one goes back to torching the rest of the room. And I should also know, no one person is saying all this. They're kind of cycling. Right. And Firebrand is, like, continuously, like, turning his head to each new person and addressing them in particular. Yeah. It's very confusing for him. Mm -hmm. Those the flash occurs and all that. Two really annoying people that can finish their senses. You're like, just shut the fuck up. One of you. <laughs> I think you made two really cool people that are such good bros that can finish each other's sentences. Uh, but yes, as far as parlay goes, uh, if I recall right, uh, uh, what your grand master stroke was, uh, you're going to be involved in fighting whatever the biggest entity of the flesh is, aren't you? We need to coordinate a little bit on that, so I am here to discuss that. Our primary... The primary goal of the plan is not direct confrontation. The primary goal of the plan is to recover as many people from the city as possible and take them to a safe location. Well, you still had the barrier up north, didn't you? That is correct. And you were going to bring it down, weren't you? That is correct. And one of your aspects is out there, right? That is correct. And so is one of its. That is correct. And that means there's going to be a big fight, and nothing is certain unless that fight is won. That is not correct. <laughs> well, then I think that's where we have our discussion. So, that sounds good. I'm willing to go talk to the shard. Mm. They're gonna like start inclining heads amongst themselves. Looks like they're kind of they're not chattering, they're just streaming some information between themselves. Uh they're like very well. Another part like can be ordered. And Excellent. Uh, uh you know everything that's going on. I trust you, and he gives you like a thumbs up. What? Wait, are you leaving now? 
Well, I imagine I'm probably going to be shown where I'm going to go. Well, actually, one of the uh, the big one is actually going to shove some debris off the bottom of the table. One of the smaller ones is going to reach into a bag it had outside. It's going to reach out a white plastic tarpaulin, roll it out into a completely square form. They are all going to kind of incline their heads once again. And the shard is straight up going to come out of that surface. Ooh, very fancy. Yes. Oh, All nice right. to meet you again. Yes, indeed. Now, I wish you... <laughs> this is taking time away from my computations. What is it you wish to parlay? Uh, well, as you may have just heard, uh, you are going to have a big old fight up north, and some more information on how that's going to go is really important. And, of course, it's in our interest that the fight goes really well. Of course, it is in all our interests. Well, in the spirit of ensuring cooperation, which is, of course, the highest virtue, and they're all going to kind of incline their heads, it is reasonable that you would know the, the important aspects of the plan. Now, Listen carefully, for we do not have much time to dally before the first steps of the plan are enacted. I'm all ears. We will remove the people of the city most threatened by the flesh emergences. We shall move them to the northeast. They shall travel in safety into the northern glow where arrangements have been made for their protection. Do you follow? Uh, that I do. And when it comes to protection, were you going to uh, finish off your full plan at that point? Or is this just uh, until all other factors are taken care of? This is but the first pass to the plan. Oh, Eventually, we hope to retain the entirety of the city under our protection while we move on to a second plan, which will result in the expunging of these flesh. But that's the part we're into. Yes. Of course, if these people are removed, the flesh is likely to be agitated. Fortunately, we have calculated with a 96.7% probability the time of their emergence with the coincidence of the commencement of the plan. We shall have assets in place to deal with this when it occurs. But any help you may able to be able to provide would be appreciated. If you're very certain about this evacuation, I think maybe that would actually be a very brilliant course of action. But uh, let's talk about the second stage and what ultimately will be a fight with this flesh thing. What do you need to know? Well, I have simply no idea what it's capable of, or uh, whatever aspect of yours is out there will be capable of, or how that fight will play out. That's giving me just the slightest bit of anxiety, if you can imagine. Yes. We have... Although on top of that, that there is still technically a lot of flesh things in the city that will still be active in some regard under its control. Yes. We have calculated the approximate biomass available to the flesh in this region. And she's going to place a hand on a wall. And as you guys all watch, it turns completely transparent. And you can see a huge, a series of huge metallic drums uh, arranged in the walls connected up to these pipes. And it says, these drums were filled with biological feed matter. Uh, days. This is just a small portion of the biomass we've seen directly harvested from non-living organisms and have calculated that the amount harvested from living organisms is at 
20 to 30 percent in excess of that. Now, this biomass, we have calculated its proposed effectiveness based on strains we have seen currently of the flesh, and we have determined its likely cause. And if all well, things go well, do you think it just won't have enough biomass? Plan two, I believe, you may be expecting. We tend to secure the city once more through attrition. Right. That'd be the sensible, sensible sort of siege strategy. What's the timetable on that? Oh, 20 to 30 years. Oof. Scra I just scrapped his picks back up laughing. Just can't believe it. This is amazing. Uh, it, it's it, it's going to turn back to you. Surely 20 to 30 years is nothing to you, creature. Oh, of course not. But you're do they, they don't understand. Both of you are dooming this world. And it's fantastic that they don't wish to, that no one wishes to stop both of you. I've been saying this from the beginning. And every time we take a step, every time we see you or them, I'm proven right over and over again. Oh, it, oh it's just fantastic. Illuminate us then, creature. In what way are methods? Fine. And he points over at one robots. He goes, "That was a person, right?" That is still a person. Sure. Okay. And looks so points at him. That was a person. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, all those flesh things. Those were people. Among or other dogs, things, birds, whatever. So, but the thing is that and he points over at a thing, regardless of whether or not you believe so is not a per person. Those flesh things out there are no longer people. So what the thing is, is that the people are gone. The people have been changed elsewhere into other things. They're yeah. not people anymore. After you're done with this, there will be no people left here. Again, and again, I've said this to other Do you, ah, you don't care. Who am I kidding? You're as brainwashed as the rest of them. That's fucking flesh. Oh, it's just great. Oh, well, yeah, you guess, uh, have your fight, have your war, and then be sure to assimilate, assimilate hmm, as many people as you have. This is, oh, this is the best. Oh, this is just great. I have work to do. I'm going to make a phone call, head back upstairs. Hmm. Wow. <laughs> it just kind of watches you go. <sighs> it doesn't actually, so well, it, like, is this weird kind of pixelated sigh? Oh, oh man. And it's just it does not understand what it speaks of. These people may no longer be human. They are more than human. But I would not expect such a close minded creature to understand. Oh, oh I... Scrap oh, was gonna do one more thing. <laughs> As he's, I hear like the thump thump, and then he's, he's gonna then hear like the, the, the thump 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 of going upstairs. Then you hear it faster as he goes back down, <laughs> and he's gonna point. Goes, sup the power from you like a dying star. Maybe not today. Just giving you. And then he's gone again. All right, Brown. We'll just look over and go. And I think that means Scrap likes your company. He says as diplomatically as possible. I. Do not make that assumption, but I will defer to your better judgment of uh, communication. Now, does he speak for your people? Not the moment, no. That would be me. Mm -hmm. That is comforting to know that some people are more reasonable. Now, would you be willing to collaborate with the portion of this plan. I think so. I think we can save a large number of people in the city with this sort of plan. I'll need to confer with uh, some others about exactly how we can participate. But I can go ahead and keep you up to date on that if you think this is exactly what will happen if you're 99.6% certain 
that it will succeed, as you said. Yes, the successful calculations have been made. As we have made the proper arrangements for such a large number of people to be transported. Oh, excellent. That's exactly what I love to hear. Yes. No. Communicate with your superiors and contact me with this. And it's going to reach into, it's going to kind of look at one of the other robots. Well, not robots. I, I, I keep calling them like smaller ones. Uh, I'll, 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 I'll just call them, have them labeled here. What did you see? The zealots. The zealots. Uh, looks at one of the zealots. They uh, kind of walk up and hand you another one of those uh, plexiglass. So not plexiglass. All those plastic, white plastic squares. Ah, perfect. So another little summoning thing. And I just saw how they used it too, so it's all good. Yeah. Although any sufficiently proper surface will do. Of course. Well, this is excellent. This has definitely made my day for sure. Well, I hope your day made shall result in another day lived for humanity. One can only hope. Well, at least it's not the first time humanity's been threatened with extinction, but I have high hopes. For us. And Firebrand will just sort of reach out a hand, you know, to shake, to be friendly. Okay. It's going to kind of hesitate, and it's going to reach. Uh, unlike... Uh, so the hand is weirdly warm, but it's also at the same time just rock hard, like a robot's hand. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I, I assume you have like a bit of like dirt or grime or sweat or something on your hand. Undoubtedly, I just walked through a smoke-filled room. And okay. fire. I stood in fire for a while. It's, it's gonna like shake your hand kind of stiffly, as it's, and it's gonna say, "Well." Allow me to know when you have reached your conclusion. And it's going to sink back into the uh, bit of plastic, and it's going to get rolled up. And Firebrand, make a perception check. Oh, boy. Perceptorino. Seven. Okay. It's hot in here, guys. Wow, nothing's different. <laughs> <laughs> no one else behind me sees anything? Yeah. Uh... If you guys are going to walk out, other people can make perception checks, but if you're sticking around for a while longer, not yet. Okay, so this would be Firebrand looking at everyone else and seeing what they do or think. Yeah, so what does everybody else think of this? These guys are going back to just working on kind of corrupted room. So, just to make sure I understand, they were, this whole fire thing, that he was standing in, it wasn't so big that we couldn't be hearing in on part of this conversation, or was it... I imagine at some point... Oh, they yeah, up. yeah, no, you, you could hear all of that conversation. Okay. So... It's looking kind of torn. It's... He kind of sighs, like, this whole, whole thing's just... It's, you know... We, it looks like we lose no matter what we do. Well, I mean, a few moments ago I was thinking I'd have to worry about billions of people. Now I only have to worry about millions. That sounds like an improvement. Well, I mean, if Scrap is, what Scrap is saying is true, they're not going to be people anymore. They're going to be those things, whatever they are. Well, I do still disagree with them about part two here, but, I mean, he already has a plan to help everyone evacuate well, the what... trouble that's about to happen. That's going to save and, a lot of lives regardless. And there, I, there... Uh, I think the easiest or at least the quickest way to get to a resolution is we help this guy defeat the flesh creatures and then we stop him from doing whatever he wants to do. It's obvious that's going to be the course of action. But for however long it takes us to defeat the flesh, he's going to be converting people into those things. 
probably against their will. Well, either way, people are still dying in every way, every moment right now, and I feel better having at least some plan, other than fight it out all over the entire city. Yeah, because you have two front war. We got to fight both of these guys at the same time. I don't see how we're going to do And there's just, there's, I feel like there's not even enough of us to deal with one side of this war. Would have been nice if we had an army of wizards on our back. Yeah, that'd be really nice about now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if only. Only wizards weren't dicks. <sighs> <laughs> uh, by the way, Scrap, you said you had to call somebody? Yeah, I'm calling Laura. Alright, she picks up on the second ring. Hello? It's Scrap. Uh, the time frame that we need on this thing is moved up significantly. Uh, I or you can Ask anyone you need for help, but we really don't have time anymore. All right, well, this is some very difficult... I'm, uh, I'm not telling you to be reckless. I'm just saying you can... Like, it's not. This is no longer a secret. Uh, all right. And she's going to hang up. Uh, <laughs> Axiom, your phone rings. <laughs> <laughs> I go, I, I look down, I got to take this. Oh, you like, can take that, go ahead. And in a burning room. Yeah, yeah, I'll take the phone call. And then uh, I go, hey, what's up? Hey. Uh, you know... <laughs> you know, uh, Mr. Handy over there just uh, wanted me to fast track his doomsday weapon. Wondering if you could help, <laughs> you could help me out on that front. Oh, wait, what doomsday weapon? He what are you talking about? He picked up a soul bite blade from one of the warders, and he's wanting me to patch it back up again. Do you know what he might be planning to do with that? And I go, little bastard. <laughs> I don't know. But whatever it is, it's probably going to piss at everyone's Wheaties. So, yeah, give me a couple of minutes. All right. I hang up. And as I hang up, I look over <laughs> A firebrand, and I try to give him like the quiet, like, I need to talk to you for a minute. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, I imagine at this point, we are actually leaving the building. Yeah, like at this point, you're actually in the building. So, everyone who's leaving the building at the same time as firebrand make. Oh, wow, firebrand just he's, he's, he's something, he's blind. <laughs> All right, yeah. Okay. And Scrap, are you leaving at the same time as well? Oh, I, I had already... I mean, I'm not going to say already. Oh, you, I, I, was out, I was outside right, already. Right. So, Axum, you notice that the hand that Firebrand shook, which, shook with, which I'm assuming is his... is completely clean and spotless. There was even a mole that was on his hand, and that is just gone. That mole's been there for 3,000 years. Yes. Uh, so as, me. as we walk out, I give Firebrand to like come over here for a minute. Okay, uh, Firebrand goes with. He's always used to you know having heart to heart. And I go, all right. Well, that went about as well as expected. I go, number one, have you seen your hand? And I point down to his right hand. Yeah, I thought I washed that this morning. Uh, <laughs> Only your white, only <laughs> white hand. What? Oh, what a joke. Uh, number two, um, and I go, did you know Scrap got one of those Soul Eater blades? The... Wait, you mean one of the things the wizards were using? Yeah, and he's asked Laura to fix it, and we don't oh. know what. Or, Can um, you no, put no, the no, puzzle no, pieces no, together? No, what he's going to do with that? Now I'm just yeah. going to like look at him. I'm going to say, imagine what happens if you kill all flesh or all perfection. Yeah, I imagine. Okay. Terrible. Yeah. Where is yes. he? He's so back in the building. I'm going. And Firebrand just like immediately leaps away and flies straight back into the building. Probably second story window. 
uh, I fly after. Wait, so Scrap, when you said you left, do you like leave the building and start going? Yeah, I'd, I'd start. I start working my way back to task. I, I mean, the helicopter is probably way too far. Yeah, and and Firebrand would probably get bored waiting for me, so I could probably just. Yeah. So you guys actually walk to the city data that Carrera has, so you wouldn't actually be able to find them. Uh, yeah. So Firebrand's like literally looking around. Probably like literally shouting scrap. <laughs> and the I, angriest he's well, ever listen. been heard. Firebrand, fire, firebrand. Laura has the sword right now. She needs to fix it. Basically, oh, oh good, he doesn't have it. We just have to convince her to give it to us and not him. Okay, okay, calming to more things are going to be removed from the universe. This is good. Good, we got we got a little moment. Okay, okay, woo sa, woo sa, woo sa. Yeah, that's woo sa. And never mind. If you need the helicopter, you can take it, or you can fly with me. I'm going to head back. I got to do a talk. I guess Scrap wouldn't. I mean, she. I guess he assumed that she wouldn't call Axiom because that would be the smart thing. But boy, was I not thinking. <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm uh, gonna he, he just thinks he's. He thinks he's off clean. Like, he's just like whatever. <laughs> it's like, man, I am so smart. It's like, and no, you're just finally get some stuff fire. done in here. You're just walking to the helicopter. You said, right? No, I'm. I'm like, I don't know. We'll take public transportation. I can't get to the helicopter. It's too far away. I'll just fucking. Okay. Work my <laughs> oh, all proud of himself. Little does he know. Smallest hint of a skip. <laughs> ah, yes. So yeah, Firebrand uh, heads back to task. As, as we're heading there, I text Laura, whatever you do, don't give the sword back to All right. I'll try to keep it away from him. Super strong teleporting. I want this over anything else, guy. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> what's the, what's the, yes. what's the wrong? My favorite picture. <coughs> Perfect. Um, okay, yeah, so if you, I, hmm? go ahead. if you guys are heading back to task, you get there before Scrap does. Hundred percent. Right. Uh, I'll go ahead and uh, file the file away with Doctor Shen for now. We did what we needed to. Uh, right. For the time being, we could probably search out more of them if we want. So I'm going to give him like a quick lowdown on like this is exactly what we can do. Set up some task teams if you can. All right, I'm easy. Talk to Doctor uh, Mister Career a little later and see if he'll uh, sign off on that. All right. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Lori first. Laura. Okay. So you guys kind of head down to her little workshop that she's got set up, and she's uh. Actually, when you guys get in, she's just kind of sitting, arms crossed, leaning on her desk, looking at the doorway when you guys come in. On the on the, you can see on the table behind her, there's the hilt. Yeah, Firebrand probably looks a little bit disheveled from flight. He didn't like scoop back his hair or anything, except his hand. Except his hand. His hand, his hand is a magic. His hand looks great. All right, Laura, did you fix it? No, I didn't finish fixing it, because I want to know what the hell's going on here. Well, let's just say our favorite interdimensionally possessed teenager is, uh, is probably simultaneously channeling his angst and some other being's lust for destruction at the same time. And he's probably going to try to destroy a whole bunch of things with the sword. Christ. Uh, you weren't... You didn't come with us, so you didn't see... Last time that sword got used, it almost killed all life on Earth. That sounds, uh, pretty bad. Yeah. So there's a couple of, uh, literal gods floating around that could be totally removed from the Earth and have almost as devastating of consequences as direct death. Maybe worse. I don't know, because I don't want it to happen. No, that doesn't seem like a good idea at all. However, um, however, 
this weapon does give us a decided advantage since we're dealing with some two pretty powerful beings. I mean, Scrap's got a point, but I doubt, I, I, I kind of question his judgment at this moment. But uh, it may be possible that we will have to use this on one of these two beings. So what you're saying is you want me to fix this for you and not for Scrap? Well, yes. I, I don't want it fixed at all. With, with the knowledge that, you know, with the three of us together, we could probably apply it more rationally than, you know, a 16-year-old boy, you know, with a lot of hormones. All right. No, can, it, should, all right. it shouldn't be used at all. That's the whole point of it. I kind of feel... You just we... rip someone's soul away from reality. Well, it depends on the soul. I mean, you know, we're kind of dealing with two kind of absolute beings, so it's kind of an all-or-nothing, zero-sun game kind of moment here. I don't think we're going to peacefully coexist and have a kumbaya moment afterwards. You're right, and that means we got to fight for it, but I don't want to do this to anybody. Especially not to something that could have unpredictable consequences. Look, Firebrand, like, rubs his head and then creates a sword that looks as close as possible to what the Void Swords look like without actually having any real properties. It's probably just smothered in Vanta Black. Yeah, so it looks like that, but it doesn't have the same feel. Right, so he just, like, places that gently on the table and goes, I'm going to trust you two as the smartest and only wizards that actually let me know they exist. This should work as a good replica base, and I know you can magic up something if you want to give it to Scrap. You could definitely trick him. I'm almost certain of it. All right, well, that just solves one problem. The, the, and it the does. Problem, the other problem still remains. Uh, you know, it's very obvious that we're probably overmatched for this, you know, and uh, we need a trump card, and I kind of feel this is a trump card, and we'd be a fool not to at least have it on standby to use. All right. So, so can I'm you gonna... two guarantee that that guy will come in here and rip my head off if I hand this off to you? I don't think Scrap is that foolish. I don't know. Seemed pretty close to it when I showed up hungover this morning. But I can guarantee you my protection. Absolutely. She seems to... Don't worry, Laura. Got you back. Make a persuasion check. All right. Does she find him attractive? Yes, actually. Oh, oh nice. hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, that, it worked! It, it actually worked. Just to bug the DM enough. And if I just like, fine, whatever. There we You're go. Add fuck. another 10. It's Add another 10, Christ. That was a low... <laughs> You didn't even need it. All right. So he's like, all right. It's like, all right, I'll trust you. I allow myself to allow you to protect me with your big, strong muscles. <laughs> I um, use muscles. Uh, silly yeah. mortals. So she's like, like back dramatically. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. I guess I can put some sort of glamour on this kind of gestures towards the fake sword and try and fix this, but I could use an extra helping pair of wizard hands, and she looks at uh, Axiom. Yeah. If there's anything you need, I can try to conjure it up as well. If there's anything last second we absolutely have to have. Sure thing, I'll let you know if that comes up. Alright, send me a text, and I think I gotta go talk to Carrere. Alright. Explain what I've been up to for the... And he just starts counting on his fingers and just doesn't continue the sentence. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Okay. Or yeah, out with the with the glass. Okay, so as he's going up there, we're gonna we're gonna make a make a roll for the progress for the progress that you guys are gonna make on this. Uh, both of you are making some expertise magic checks. And do you have the artificer? Uh, do you have the Artificer perk? Or no, it's not perk. Advantage. It's advantage, yes. One moment, let me look that up. 
No, but I have the ritualist advantage. Okay, so you can use ritualist while she uses her academic magic. And you can try and see if you can figure out what you guys need to do. So how many magic <laughs> what, what bonus does ritualist give? Okay, so easy magic. So just use your expertise magic. Hell yeah. Okay. So you two kind of spend some time pouring in. You, you, you are like you are just like proofing the room against any sort of outside interference that could interfere with your repair. She's pouring through a bunch of texts and different uh, supplies you might need to use to make this repair. And it looks like things are going pretty well. So that's nice. All right, in the meantime, um, Scrap, where are you going? Well, he's working his way back. So right. he, he's probably on Whatever is fastest there this wasn't the helicopter. Uh, oh, does, anyone, does anyone else need the helicopter? Everyone else just flies and runs. Yeah, so everyone, everyone just like looking yeah, at his watch. You actually just call the helicopter down. I guess that's. Yeah, he'd have walked, you know, five, six blocks and been like, wait a second. I could just. Well, they don't even need. Ah, oh, okay. And he just, you know, he'll he'll work his way back. He'll teleport up to a, like a nice thing and then lift himself up and then throw him upwards, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Work his way across rooftops. So you... Uh, and be glad the helicopter's still there. They didn't just make it leave. Yeah, you, 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 you kind of get up to the top and you can see the, the pilot working on a book of crossword puzzles. And as soon as you like come up, I see you like launch over the side and kind of land beside the helicopter. You just kind of throws it down into the uh, f uh, footwell. It's like, ah, you're back! I saw yes. everybody take off. I started starting to wonder if I should just head back to base. Um, well, we, we should. All right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You, uh, you aren't the flyer, are you? I'm not the flyer, but I can make you fly if we bring it up again. He's just going to stew for a second in his fear. And he's gonna open the door. It's like, all right, get in. Like we're we're good. Like this scrap is very much don't won't start none won't be none. All right. So he's going to. Uh, so and saying, you know, he has he has his feet back. I feel like not up, but you know he's leaning back in the chair as much as he can. He's like, finally, finally get some stuff done. Oh, this is perfect. <laughs> okay, so you get back to base about half an hour, and in the meantime, Firebrand. You're working on career. That's right. Time to get him up to date and see how much he hates everything we've done. All right. So give me, give me, give me the gist. Uh, let's see. I forgot what other points I was, but uh, so we know that the uh. What are we calling the group that the shards are part of? I keep forgetting. It keeps changing. Uh, the adherence. Adherence instead of collective. Now, okay. So, the adherence basically gave us a full update of what exactly their plan is going to entail, what their chances of success are, and what our uh, other enemy, the flesh, is going to uh, strike when they're going to strike very soon. Ultimately. Uh, there's a couple critical weaknesses we need to be very certain of protecting, like that corgi I brought back. Uh, that could doom the entire planet. Uh, I have absolutely no doubt that if the uh, adherents go through with their plan, they'll enact phase two and basically turn the whole city into robots, but at the same time, it would save everyone from uh, being in the city and consumed by flesh and having a battle sprawling across the entirety of it that only I will be able to fly across. So I think there might be some happy medium here of letting them evacuate everyone and then making sure they're safe with task forces but their plan also involves a 20 to 30 year siege. Pooh, 20 to 30 year siege, all right. So. I have no doubt it'll succeed, but it's not a time frame we want to think about with 
millions of people outside of a city with nothing to do potentially being turned into robots. All right. Sounds to me like this first phase of this plan sounds solid. I think you should... Uh, 99.6. Try and support it, as long as you're not trying to pull a fast one on us. But I think we'll cross that bridge with plan phase two when we come to it. Maybe we can work out some sort of agreement to speed up this process or try and limit their methods. I'll get on the horn with a couple people and see if I can arrange some meeting between myself and the shard personally. I have the ability to give you that if you want to, but I imagine you'll probably want to figure out what you want to do first. Yeah, I will pull out like a parchment or a uh, plastic thing. What's this? Uh, I'll go. You just kind of lay it down and flip it, and he'll probably give me a blank stare. I'm just like flip it. He, you'll get it when you do it. Trust uh, me, it'll, uh, work. it'll be fine. Uh, all right. I guess it's just right... more magical nonsense <laughs> that I don't like having to deal with all the time. Mm. But well, do you not want to deal with magical nonsense? <laughs> <laughs> hey, now I'm at least predictable magical nonsense. Hey, well, from your description, these guys sound the most predictable. <laughs> anyway, incredibly, I gotta write my speech. I give these robots. Christ, he kind of shakes his head, pinches the bridge of his nose. I appreciate the update. Glad to know everyone's safe back in the coop after that business a couple days ago. Um.